What's up, guys? It's your boy, Ruben. You know what it is. We had to bring you this video. And definitely, if you're into the NFL, because NFL starts next week, stay tuned. I'm going to be posting um, some more thoughts on NFL stuff. And as you can see by the hat, next video I'm going to drop is the Jags uh, video. So stay tuned for that if you're interested to hear that. But I don't want to waste too many of you guys' time if you are a Knicks fan, um, because the big bombshell dropped yesterday. And that is Donovan Mitchell ended up going to the Cleveland Cavaliers for essentially five draft picks, three picks from 2025, 2027, 2029, unprotected, and then 2026, 2027 pick swaps. Um, they also acquired Lowry Markinen and uh, Colin Sexton, and their first round pick from this year, Akbaji. Um, it was a pretty substantial haul, and I just wanted to give you guys my thoughts on it, and I want to actually say that I'm actually one of the fans that's extremely proud of the Knicks. Am I bummed out that we didn't end up getting um, Donovan Mitchell here in New York? Absolutely. Because for me, I have visions of we finally have a guy who offensively is, is a counter to whatever we're given. You know, when, when you're in a, imagine having Donovan Mitchell in that series against the Atlanta Hawks when Trey Young was carving us up. We have a guy that can answer that. And that was something I was really looking forward to, but I didn't want to do it at the expense of basically all our youth and all our future. Um, Cleveland, while in the short term, looks like they're going to be a problem. All right, because keep in mind, Akbaji and Sexton were players that didn't even play for them last year. And Cleveland was right there, um, you know, in the playoff line. They, they were one of the most improved teams in the NBA last season. And uh, they look to have a very promising future. But so with that being said, they've got, like I said, they got rid of Sexton and Abaji, who weren't even on the roster last year. Lowry Markkinen was. And I think that changes the dynamic for them a little bit because what was unique about the Cleveland Cavaliers was that they were able to roll out some big lineups with Lowry um, essentially playing like the three, Kevin Love playing the four uh, off the bench, Jared Allen. Like, they were able to throw some huge lineups out there. Evan Mobley. Um, all these guys were able to be on the floor because some of these guys can handle the ball, right? There were, I think I even once saw a Jared Allen, Kevin Love, Lowry Markinen, Evan Mobley, and Darius Garland lineup. And then when they want to just go shooting, they'll just take Jared Allen out and bring, you know, Karis LeVert in. They have so many things they can do, and while they're missing Lowry marketing, that's 35 is potent, and to bring Karis LeVert off the bench, instant offense, that team's going to be a beast in the East, um, barring that it works chemistry-wise. And I will say this, right, and I didn't speak on it much uh, while we were thinking about bringing Donovan Mitchell in, because I want Donovan Mitchell, I was, you know, but a concern of mine wasn't that I was going to have such a small uh, backcourt with Jalen Brunson and Donovan Mitchell, which that is a concern, but it wasn't a, a pressing concern for me. I was more concerned on the chemistry amongst the team because we would have had a starting five, basically what the rumor had been if we would have got rid of like Grimes quickly, OB, picks, whatever, right? That we were going to have a starting lineup of Mitch, Randall, RJ Barrett, Mitchell and Brunson. And um, the concern for me was all these guys need the ball. Julius Randle needs the ball to be effective. RJ Barrett, you're, you're kind of relegating him to be a spot up shooter in that lineup. And are you getting kind of the most out of, you know, your team chemistry wise? And that was something I was concerned about, but it's a good problem to have. I would have rather them figure it out than not have it. Uh, I think that's something that Cleveland might have to experience because are you willing to take the ball out of Darius Garland's hands? Because I really think that team flourished a lot more when Sexton went down and Garland got more run and, and more um, ability to kind of dictate what's happening. How does that dynamic change with Donovan Mitchell in the mix? So just my thoughts on that. Uh, can they share the ball? But, you know, at the end of the day, I think they're both Hoopers. They'll figure it out. And I think they'll be a beast. Now, um, I know some of us are disappointed. I'm actually really hyped for the kids. I think the next move should be 
figuring out whatever we can to get Julius Randle off the roster. And again, I I like Julius Randle as a player. I think he's a very good, talented player. I think he's a, a workhorse. I think he's a, a big, he's one of the last few true power forwards. And, uh, and he has the ability to, you know, stretch his game out to the three-point line. His problem is, 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 you know, we've, we've kind of terraformed into a different team around him ever since he got the most improved award in that we're a younger team. We're able to run and gun more. We're not um, the kind of team that should be standing around watching him ISO. And then with the debacle at point guard with the injuries of Derrick Rose and what happened with Kemba Walker, we asked Julius Randle to bring the ball up entirely too much. And it led to a lot of issues. You know, the team, it, it's the system offensively doesn't fit the team with the way Julius Randle needs to play, and which is why we need him off the roster. Now, I don't think it happens, guys, I'll let you know now, before the season starts. I think, unfortunately, if we get rid of Julius Randle, it's probably going to be a trade deadline thing. And the reason for that is, is I don't think it's good business to trade him for pennies on the dollar. There was a rumor that we were going to move him to L.A., uh, to the Lakers in a deal uh, if the Donovan Mitchell thing went down uh, with the hopes of getting a first or t both the first and Russell Westbrook's contract and sending him to the Lakers. I But then that's since kind of been debunked, so I don't know how true it was. Uh, I was really hoping that we could pull that off and, again, and it wasn't to play Russell Westbrook. We're trading for the contract because $47 million comes off the books next year. <sighs> Now I'm, I, you know, again, I'm hearing that's off the table. So I don't know, you know, what the play is right now because I don't think Julius Randle has any value or the art. It's not that he doesn't have any value. I'm not seeing the kind of team that can use his particular skill set outside of the Charlotte Hornets. And um, with this contract, it just kind of makes it hard to figure out where to send them, take on, you know, because we don't want to take on more money, obviously, to send them wherever. And we don't want to attach picks to send them out either because we're still trying to figure out how to get a star here in New York. So we want as many assets as we can. I think L.A., we should be trying to convince you know, them to take whatever we can to, you know, come off some of this money. Um, it, if, if I could attach Derrick Rose, and I know he's beloved here in New York, but – Guys, he's up there in age, and I'd rather see more run for quickly, and I'd rather see more run from, from Reddish. If you're asking me why not send Fournier out, well, I was all about sending Fournier out if we were bringing Donovan Mitchell in. The the guys that I think I want to see go are Derrick Rose, Julius Randle, because I want to see Obi Toppin and Cam Reddish get more run. Evan Fournier is is a sniper. Like I don't, you know, I wouldn't just give him away for just anything. In that roster, if you're fielding a starting lineup of my dream roster, to be honest with you, that I just would put out there and see what happens, is Mitchell Robinson, Obi Toppin, Cam Reddish, RJ Barrett, um, and Julius Randle. Not not Julius Randle, um, Jalen Brunson. And then that way, off the bench, you got Fournier and Grimes quickly. Like, that is what I want to see personally. I, I'd love to see Cam Reddish get more burn, and I really just think his game meshes well with RJ's attacking style. And um, that's my dream lineup. But, you know, I realize a lot of people don't feel the same way I do about Reddish and whatever, and I don't know where the front office is on that. But I think it's time to kind of clear the deck to let these kids flourish, if for no other reason to get their trade value up we got to get quickly's earned more time. Obi's earned more time. Um, trade deadline, we, we're just going to hope that, I guess, Julius Randle ups his value enough that we don't have to attach a pick to him. If anything, that he actually becomes an asset that we can send out and bring assets back. So that's just good business. Um, but here's the thing, guys. Also, consider this. And I know we're tired of waiting, but a lot of superstars signed their contract. Two, three years from now, you, we don't know where we're going to be, right? The idea is to stay flexible enough to make a move. What if in a few years we can pull off a Anthony Edwards trade or 
Devin, you know, CP3 retires and Phoenix falls apart. Maybe Devin Booker wants out. Just keep in mind, there's always somebody out there. And if nothing else, Donovan Mitchell went to Cleveland. Okay. He only has three years left on that deal. In two years, he can he can pull the I don't intend to resign move. And they're going to be forced to move him. And we can make a play for him and probably for a cheaper amount than they went out, that they sent out. Here's the clever thing. And I'm sorry, when I saw the compensation, I just, whew, it's a problem, right? Some people are okay with it. I'm not okay with it. Like, I don't know, I'm not sure why uh, five picks all of a sudden became ho-hum. Not only did Cleveland get up, give up five years worth of, like, control of their draft, they gave it up in the future. Again, Donovan Mitchell only has three years left. In two years, he'll have one year left. If he demands a trade, not demands a trade, but it says, I don't intend to resign, they have to trade him. If they have to trade him and Cleveland deteriorates, they didn't get 2023 or 2024, the Utah Jazz from them. They got 25 all the way through 29. I wasn't willing to sacrifice that much control to the Utah Jazz. And he has the ability to possibly walk. That was a great deal for Danny Ainge. Um, we weren't going to match it, in my opinion. I even heard that R.J. Barrett and Quickly were, were you know, I think the ultimate, the ult, the last offer revolved around R.J. Barrett and Quickly. Um, I've heard Grimes has been off limits, which I think people, you know, confuse that with, you know, we're down on R.J. Barrett. I think it was just a combination of sort of the concerns I had, like, if you're going to have a Donovan Mitchell, is R.J. Barrett going to be able to flourish into the kind of guy that you're trying to give this max deal to and are getting max value out of? Because you're going to give him a max deal to basically be third fiddle. You see, so I think that's why R.J. Barrett kind of came up in the talks, whereas Grimes is still on a rookie deal. Plus, he has more ability to play off ball. If he ends up being that guy, it's, it's, it's just a plus, whereas... R.J. Barrett, it's it's you're giving him a hundred some odd million dollars just to basically be a spot up shooter. When you have Grimes, like Grimes, just value wise and fit, just fit better. That's why I believe Grimes was off limits, and they were more willing to part with R.J. Barrett. Just my thoughts. Let me know what y'all think. I think we did good. I think now it's it's time to those Lakers picks. Let's get them. And if if I gotta give up Fournier to get some of those picks. Bring them in, all right. Like let, let's 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 bring them in, all right. Bring the picks in, the assets, send Fournier, Rose, ramp a lot. We get those guys out. It's a lot of money we're clearing, and that's more draft assets for another move down the line. If we end up getting Donovan Mitchell for even cheaper, guys, calm down. We're setting up for a major play, and I'm with it. All right, let me know your guys' thoughts. Definitely subscribe, comment. Um, if you like, you know, everything, please, you know, definitely leave a comment. I'm reading everything. I appreciate the support. And uh, my NFL fans, tune in. I got another one coming for y'all uh, for the Jags. All right, peace.